baseline to find out the national energy, I mean national fuel consumption or fuel economy and then also uh, the average CO2 emissions. At the end of this study, we realized that there was another vehicle which we had not focused on, but had numbers which we could not neglect. So we were asked to go beyond the previous study and look at the, elect I mean, look at the motorcycle. And that is how I have come or become involved in, in, in motorcycles. My background is I have interest in, I have, I have, I have um, qualified, uh, um, my degree is in internal combustion engines and pollution, so I was okay with, with, with the uh, IC engines. But when I came here, there was a different ball game. So this is what I present, which is like a baseline on, on motorcycles. We must accept that we can't run away from the car to start with. It is with us. It is a convenient means of transport in many ways. We choose when to travel, we choose how to travel, we choose who travels with us, we choose what we carry, so the, the list is endless. It is also the most common. However, it is inevitable that the, the power plant has to change. And that is why we are talking of uh, electric mobility. It is currently the most promising uh, power plant we can put in our cars. So in that context, uh, uh, we ended up talking about electric mobility uh, for the two and three wheelers because we also saw it as a stepping stone to get into electric mobility in total. But if I go through it, uh, the way we went through it is how many, to start with, how many two and three wheelers are in Kenya. If you look at that plot, where is it? It's here. Okay. There were very few in 2006, and then from 2007, the numbers started going up, and then it has stayed, it has gone like this, like this, until now we are registering, uh, 2017 we registered almost 190, but the average we register is about 160,000 uh, per year. The next thing we needed to do is to characterize these motorcycles. Characterize means to, to define them, what exactly is out there. Uh, the first thing is that uh, we have registered about 2.3 to, 2 to 2.5 million, and we have an average registration of about 150 per year. The other point, which perhaps does not mean uh, the same to everybody, is that there are typically two and four stroke type of engines. Now this is interesting because uh, uh, in this country, I think you will be told verbally that two strokes don't exist, but for those, at least us who know, they exist and they are the most polluting. The next thing we established is the capacity of these engines, the border borders in particular, and uh, if you look at uh, the numbers down there, these are cc's. Uh, most of the motorcycles are 125 to 150 cc's. You have these other two groups, which are also substantial, but most of them are here. That means that this is the motorcycle which is able to carry four people if you want to carry four people, or you go uphill and do all those gymnastics we do the motor with the motorcycles. The next thing uh, uh, is that these border borders use carburetors. Does anybody know a carburetor? Okay, a few people know a carburetor, <laughs> okay? They use carburetors, and not only that, but the technology on these border borders is like of 1960s. So we are having a vehicle which has a relatively inefficient uh, uh, fuel system. Because of that, uh, we will have a problem with the emissions from it. We will have a problem with emissions. We will have a problem with even just evaporative losses. So as a result of that, we discovered that we have a bigger problem with these things. So to get to quantify the bigger problem, 
we looked at how many kilometers they do. Now, a motorcycle does, uh, the border borders does about 100 kilometers a day, actually, uh, excess of 100 kilometers a day. Uh, um, if you consider what you do in your car, or according to AA, what they use for all those estimates they have to do, they have about 15,000 uh, 15, kilometers uh, per year. I should have written that somewhere. Uh, so we used this so that we ended up with an estimate of 31,200 kilometers done by the border borders, and a car does this. We have also got to remember that the car has, has within its, its system, it has an emission control system. The motorcycles don't have it. So we put all this together, and then estimated the amount of CO2 that is, uh, uh, I mean, that is emitted by both. The blue is the, uh, we are calling them light duty vehicles. So the blue is the light duty vehicles. And you can see, uh, as, see as, as it varies, I don't have all the years, but, uh, but the uh, profile is clear. The motorcycles is almost uh, uh, insignificant at this level. But from 2009, you look at how it is catching up. Uh, with the with the light duty vehicles, so by the time you come to 2017, uh, uh, you literally have the motorcycles as emitting much more CO2. So this was a new thing; we didn't see this coming, but this also brought to light something else. So the next slide, I have a, a red flag. The red flag is signifying that now we have a problem beyond other problems we had seen. And the problem is now we have a lot of hydrocarbons emitted, we have a lot of CO emitted, and NOx. So the emission problem from motorcycles is a big one. If, like uh, uh, some of the, 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 the towns in Kenya, if you visit a place like Kisi and Kisumu, it is relatively wild. And you can imagine what is happening to those places. So this puts a strong case for electric motorcycles. Now, just to mention a related uh, uh, um, factor, because we had a background, this is the average what you call fuel economy or fuel consumption of a few countries. And you can see on this particular list, I have USA, Canada, EU, China, Japan, Korea, Australia, uh, uh, in Africa, there's none here, but I superimposed Kenya. Everybody else seems to be doing something so that their fuel consumption or the average for the nation is going down. But uh, if you look at Kenya, uh, uh, you will not see the same profile. And it was curious, we found this curious, and that wondered why we who import all these cars somehow don't have the same profile. And uh, um, we had two answers for that. We don't have strong regulating policies and institutional arrangements, and also electric mobility. These were weaknesses in our system. Now, we have said, and I think uh, it is repeated many times, that there, are, there have been issues as to why electric mobility has not picked up. High upfront purchase cost, limited driving distances, absence of charging infrastructure and flexibility, I mean, for flexibility and convenience, absence of regulating policies, and lack of awareness of the public. So I can't dwell much on that. It has been said many times. But when we also looked at what the others have done that we have not done, the primary thing was they set targets. They said they want where they wanted to be when. Then they developed strong policies to support the market for the introduction of electric vehicles. And then they develop and implement charging infrastructure. Um, in doing so, we looked at some of the places where which we could access their dates. They have these dates as to when they will achieve their targets. And here, there is nobody in Africa who has a target. 
Now, if you don't have a target, uh, we, you will have a problem ending up anywhere. Uh, again, it has been mentioned that uh, there are advantages in electric uh, vehicles, and I repeat this because I have it in my presentation. The e efficiencies are different. Uh, we can have the ability to do a battery, I mean, uh, uh, recharge, rechargeability of battery system. Uh, if you have had the privilege to drive like a motorcycle, I have driven a motorcycle, it is quite uh, exciting to drive. Uh, it responds very well. It is, it is quite comfortable in the city. It has lower maintenance cost. And of course, you have local free emission uh, uh, from, from electric vehicles. So the result of the study was a recommendation that we set targets. Let's not be so open about something that is so beneficial and we develop standards and also implement the charging infrastructure. 